The reading for the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time is John 6, 1 through 15, John's version of what we call the feeding of the 5,000. The story is the only miracle that is presented in all four Gospels, and with it we have themes concerning gender, the military, Jewish tradition, the mission of Jesus. First, on gender. The title, Feeding of the 5,000, is numerically incorrect, since as Matthew 14.21 notes, those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Therefore, it would be appropriate to call this miracle the feeding of the 50,000. And yet, any story about providing bread should remind all of us of the women and the children, since in antiquity, women with their young daughters provided bread. The women did the milling, the kneading, and the baking for their families and for their communities every day. The provision of bread, whether by this miracle or in the Eucharist, is a reminder of the work that women did and do. Second, on the military. John 6.10 explicitly mentions that the men, the Greek term is andres, numbered about 5,000. Why specify men? Here's one suggestion. There are several earlier places in the Bible, in Joshua, in Judith, in First and Second Maccabees, that mention 5,000 men, and each concerns military attacks. But now John gives us a picture of 5,000 men, and now they are sitting, not fighting. They are eating not killing. Third, the miracle points both to the past and to the future in Jewish tradition. It recalls the provision of manna in the wilderness in Exodus chapter 13, the bread from heaven to which Jesus will later refer in John 6, 51, when he says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. It remembers Elijah giving the jar of meal that will not be emptied and the jug of oil that will not fail until the day that the Lord sends rain on the earth to the widow of Zarephath and to her son in 1 Kings 17. It remembers 2 Kings chapter 4, where Elisha feeds over a hundred people with 20 barley loaves and a few ears of grain. And our miracle anticipates the future messianic banquet. Isaiah chapter 25 predicts, on this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. It turns out we don't need all of this. A taste of bread, a hint of fish, the food not of the wealthy, but of the people living near the Sea of Galilee. That's all that is needed for peace and prosperity. Finally, the people proclaim... This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Why? Because of that foretaste of the Messianic banquet. Because he feeds the hungry. Because he acknowledges the work of women. And because he turns an image of invading armies into an image of breaking bread. The reading ends with Jesus withdrawing because the people want to make him king. Jesus will, in John 8.23, explain that his kingdom is not of this world. But by withdrawing, he provides another teaching. We do not need divine intervention or a king, a president, a prime minister to help us recognize the contributions of women and children as well as men, to feed the hungry, to turn swords into plowshares, to celebrate the stories of our past, or work for a future where all can find their stomachs full. Every time we take a bite of bread, we can be reminded of John 6, the rich meal of memories it provides, and the important teachings that it offers, indeed continues to offer.